Hello guys, welcome. I am Shane Davis here with Yonzi Lin, and today is the day we are talking about Marvel Comics as they do have diverse characters, as you would know, that are best at everything just because they don't really have to show that they're better at anything. They just have to uh, be at a better position on the diversity pyramid. Now, what is a diversity pyramid? Diversity pyramid is kind of like uh, the more boxes you have, the better you are the first in line you are at things and uh, all of that. So we're going to talk about this character, uh, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Big emphasis on Moon Girl here as um, the character is supposed to have a high intellect. When she was originally crafted, I think she would uh, basically be able to engineer gimmicks and little trinkets or, or spring shoes, stuff like that. And uh, somebody thought it would be cute if she happened to have the highest intellect of the MCU. Why? Because... Uh, why not? There you go. Because of diversity, that's why. We're going to go through a couple of panels here that actually illustrate this diversity, forced diversity push in comics. And I think they very much showcase the biggest problems in the American comic book industry today. All right. So I'm going to go through a couple of these panels. Yes, people can tell us, oh, these are older comics of Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. You guys are not catching up. It's like, well, maybe it was worth catching up with more than Marvel. Yeah, we would. So here she is. Well, Devil Dinosaur has Mr. Fantastic pinned down. And here Moon Girl saying, you were never the strongest. Now you are no longer the smartest. But that's great. Oh, I would love to point to someone and just declare that I'm the smartest person in the room. You know what I mean? So she's saying, me versus you. Who's the smartest? Is? Okay, um, I guess everything's a competition to prove that she's the bestest and the most wonderfulest at everything, I guess, maybe. I'd also like to point out, can she talk to somebody else without pointing at them? Is this a thing? Does she have to point and scream? Yeah, hello, rude, rude. In my culture, if someone points a finger at you, you better be able to withstand whatever those come next. So here we have Hulk running a little intelligence test on Moon Girl, basically offering up this device and say, yeah, you got to solve this problem over here. And nobody could solve it. And she's like, well, I already solved it. Yeah, I already did it. And he's like, wow, you're the smartest person in the whole world. Yeah, mm. go, go around sending all these guys who are literal scientists, people who have studied for years and years and have a lot of book smart. And here they are congratulating a little girl because she has street smarts and book smarts. She's too young to have either one of those, I'm afraid to say. A lot of these things you have to acquire through age. Look, I don't get it. So here, over here is even worse. Again, like Shane says, pointing fingers. And she's like, ooh, you are a spy looking to steal all my good ideas. Really, really, so I guess Reed Richards never invented anything in his entire 60 plus years in the MCU, right? Right, no, uh, Reed Richards, who has made unstable molecule costumes for the MCU, who has made the ultimate nullifier, all these things, he can't create tons and tons of patents uh, that fund the Baxter building and the Fantastic Four and all their interdimensional uh, cosmic adventures the negative zone, all of that stuff. Never, never has he created anything at all. This kid character rides a dinosaur, by the way. Can't make this up. Points and talks at uh, Pierce and uh, yells at them. And uh, with the power of her pointing finger, wins every conversation. So here's another page where the Fantastic Four comes to the rescue. And Rick Richards is like, well, it isn't something we, I mean, it isn't something she can't handle. So now you get these four capable adults, you know, all scientific geniuses in their own rights. And they defer to this one little nine years old girl, I guess. Say, yeah. She's like, hey, look at how arrogant that is. That's what I thought you said. And finally, we have to end off on this, you know, acknowledgement from the superheroes are fine. But now you must have the villains also admit that, yes, she's the smartest, bestest, mostest, most wonderful racist of all. And Dr. Doom realizes, most recent data mining concludes there is a new top intellect on Earth, the superhero known as Moon Girl. So there's this thing where it's a forced diversity. We need more diverse characters in MCU ASAP. And the easiest way for them to jockey, not just to popularity, they're kind of sidestepping popularity. Really, their interest should be making a new popular character. But instead, they just want to have a better character, and they somehow think that will make them the, she's the smartest in the MCU, so you must buy her t-shirt or watch the cartoon show. This makes the character relevant overnight because it's she's literally standing on the backs of legacy characters created by Jack Kirby. 
it's at the expense of any type of the character development. It actually hurts the character. It's lazy writing. How about rather than just establish the character, like give me a situation that makes the character the smartest character in the MCU. Give me a story that, that says that rather than just say, hey, that guy there, I'm better than him. Why? Well, you can't. You're racist uh, if you counter that because I'm, I'm black and I'm female. So let me offer my own perspective on this. You know what's the most boring type of protagonist in any book or in any media? The absolutely perfect protagonist. The protagonist that steps off the page and is immediately the most powerful and the greatest at whatever they're doing. You know why that's so boring? Because there's no character growth. It's like if you right. start at the top, where else do you go after that? You go even higher? But it's not possible because it's a limitation. The interesting thing about comics is all this to see people and characters have a go up a development trajectory. You start off and you throw this little girl at us and you say, oh, by the way, she's the smartest in the entire MCU. Nobody else can beat her. Right. It's like, um, all right, sure. And she is the smartest by what merit? What did she do? Who did she talk to? Who are the people that she interact with? Or what events did she take part in to merit her? Sir? Yeah, and here's the thing, too, is there's tons and tons and tons of uh, Fantastic Four villains from Doctor Doom to Nihilus and the Puppet Master and go Mole Man. I could do this all day. I could not name you one arch villain or bad guy for this character. because, And it's not that this character just popped up overnight. The character's been around quite a while. This is how poorly developed the character is. The character doesn't have a rogues gallery. The character basically piggybacks on anybody in the MCU, and we see this with Miss Marvel is a really good example of a similar character, similar, the floor plan, I hate to say, uh, they're relevant because of their diversity and everybody else stand aside for them. Everybody else, everything revolves around them. Hell, Miss Marvel can become empowered by the the Terrigen Mist from the Inhumans to now just being a mutant just because uh, she can bend continuity just because she's that important. The one thing that can't change in the character is the fact she's a Muslim girl. That is the, the only reason, the only solid thing about the character. And, and again, I'm going to say the same thing. With Moon Girl, in the sense that the one selling point of this character, I mean, give me a situation, have the have Galactus come down, and the only way that Galactus is not going to destroy the planet is uh, Moon Girl built a better ultimate nullifier. You see how this works? It's already been done. Give me a, a, a situation that shows this character is more well developed or or the smartest person in the MCU. But yeah, wait, do you need a smarter person in the MCU? Isn't Reed Richards Mr. Fantastic? He's obviously uh, more merchandisable than this character. He's more well known. Why do we need a character that is a black female be smarter and point and yell at him all the time? What's the point of this? Diversity, right? Uh, the diversity pyramid, the all powerful diversity pyramid. It, it's a very strange occurrence. And to exercise this, and this is what they're doing, it's at the expense of uh, continuity, the characters that have been developed uh, by legacy creators such as Stanley and Jack Kirby, who are no longer with us. It is a shame, but it is what it is. It is modern comics. And that's why I will point you to. Extend a level up. If you guys will go check out this campaign, this is like my Tron meets Spider Man 3. Video gamers go into a new virtual reality world. When they log out, they do activate as their avatars, their 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 game um, personas with the, all the special abilities. But this time, one life to live. If you guys will check out this trailer for this smash hit comic coming to you from Nine Lives Comics, we are an independent comic book company and we would love your support. Here you go. I dream. I dream of a world carefully crafted, beautifully flawed. This is Accent. In this game of life, there is one thing that determines a victor. A player's ability to grow. A player's ability to evolve. A player's ability to survive. My name is Dog. Choose to play. Choose to upgrade. Choose to level up. Choose. 
to accept.